It's that time of year for ghosts, monsters, horror movies, and especially Halloween specials. Let's take a look at my top 10 cartoon Halloween specials today on Retro Carnage. Number 10, The Fright Stuff from Arthur. Now this is on my list for personal reasons. I love Arthur growing up, especially the early seasons with the hand-drawn animation. This episode is about a practical pranks between the boys and girls. Arthur, Brain, Binky, and Buster are all pranked by an unidentified prankster with jelly worms in one lunch, fake spiders, and a skull in a football helmet, all leading to an invitation to Muffy's costume party. Now Muffy is trying to get back at the boys from a prank on April Fools. Six months later. Damn, that's what I call holding a grudge. The party will be held at Castle Manor, which is supposedly haunted. Arthur comes up with a prank that involves Binky wearing a pumpkin head and crab claws and stand behind a curtain so when the girls see his shadow making eerie sounds, they will play a trick on the girls at the party. Well, the plan works, but Binky was not the one in the costume. A real ghost was. Number 9, Candy Bar Creep Show from Rugrats. The pickles are decorating their house into a haunted house. All the adults are in costumes which scare the babies until Angelica tells them about Halloween and all the candy that's given out. The candy that's given out is the famous Reptar Bar. Funny enough, Reptar Bars are a real thing now and will be coming out soon, even with the green ooze in the middle. The babies are excited to get these Reptar Bars, but Angelica says that they have to go through the haunted house to get them, but Dee Dee thinks the babies are too young for the haunted house. As the babies watch kids go in and out of the haunted house and getting Reptar Bars, they decide they need to go through also to get this treat. When the adults aren't looking and the haunted house is empty, the babies sneak outside into the haunted house. The props inside the house scare the babies into hiding. As more trick-or-treaters come through, they notice Phil and Lil's spaghetti-covered reflections in the mirror, Chucky with a sheets cover over him resembling a ghost, and Grandpa Lou's mask moving on its own because Tommy's inside. The trick-or-treaters plus Grandpa Lou becomes genuinely afraid of the haunted house and flee, leaving behind their bags of candy for the babies to enjoy. Number 8, Halloween with a Dead Ghost, Coast to Coast, from Cow and Chicken. Now I do want to say Cow and Chicken is already a pretty weird show, but in this one, Cow and Chicken are watching a rip-off Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, with Red Guy as Space Ghost, dubbed Dead Ghost. Cow and Chicken don't know what they want to be for Halloween, so they decide to be humans. Now seeing Cow wearing lipstick is really disturbing, I mean, look at this image. Now everyone in town thinks they are just a regular man and woman instead of in costume, and no one will give them candy. They end up at Red Guy's house who also declines them from candy, which makes the Chicken go crazy. Chicken vandalizes Red Guy's doormat, which makes Red Guy kidnap Chicken. Cow turns into Super Cow to save Chicken and forces Red Guy to give them tons of candy by the end of the night. This episode is very short, but a good one in my opinion. Number 7, Boo Ha Ha from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This episode starts off great with Ed being zombified from watching endless hours of horror films. After Eddie unplugs the TV to wake Ed from his trance, Eddie goes on to tell the guys about a map his brother gave him that maps out the houses that give out tons of candy. Now the guys' costumes are awesome. Zombie Elvis, a Viking, and the bubonic plague. Way to go, Ed. Now Ed watched so much TV that it's messing with his reality. He's seeing real people in costumes in the neighborhood as witches, aliens, and vampires. This is scaring Ed thinking these monsters are real and he starts to attack them. The map that Eddie's brother gave them is leading them all around the cul-de-sac with no luck of candy. The clues from the map are just making them go in circles. The episode ends with Eddie and Ed getting beat up from all the kids that were attacked from Ed's doing while Ed is still hallucinating from what's going on around him. Number 6, Ed is Dead, a Thriller from Rocco's Modern Life. This episode is amazing. It's like a cartoon murder mystery. The episode begins with the big heads fighting in the yard because Bev doesn't think Ed is helping clean the yard as much, but Ed blames his big wart on his ass as an excuse. Rocco notices they are fighting because a ball fell into the big head's yard while playing with Spunky. Later in the night, Rocco is awakened by a loud screaming which seems to be Ed. When he looks outside the window, he notices a shadow of Bev holding a weapon-like object over Ed's head in the window. The next day, Rocco is thinking this is all just a nightmare until he looks over at the Big Head's yard and sees Bev digging like a grave-like hole, then Bev carrying an object covered in sheets to the hole. Curiosity overcomes Rocco and he sneaks into the Big Head's home after Bev leaves. Rocco finds gardening tools under some sheets and a bush etched to say, Kill Ed. When Rocco screams and runs in terror, he runs into Bev, which reveals all the suspicion to be false. When Rocco asks Bev where Ed was, Ed emerges from a taxi and was revealed he was away for wart surgery. 
Now, this is a dumbed down version of this episode because I think people should really watch this special. It's eerie and exciting to watch. Number five, the day the world got really screwed up from the angry beavers. It's Halloween and the beavers are out trick or treating. Though they are surprised when they go to a house that is owned by their hero, however, Oxnard is having problems of his own as a strange creature is sucking things into an alternate dimension in which the beavers get sucked in also. They soon realize the alternate dimension is a combination of many of Oxford's films and that it is up to them to slay the monsters in order to restore everything back to the state of normalcy. A great thing about this special is a reference to the 1951 The Day the Earth Stood Still with the episode title. This episode parodies B-movies in the sci-fi genre. Number 4, Arnold's Halloween from Hey Arnold. The episode starts with a discussion of the yearly Halloween party the apartment throws. Arnold and Gerald are just wanting to help with the party this year, but Grandpa tells them they are too young and just kids. This sparks a fire for the boys as they form a plan to scare all the attending people at the party. As Arnold and Gerald are planning their prank, Helga is trying to get the whole school class to dress up as aliens for a costume group. Helga asks Arnold and Gerald if they want to join in. Arnold tells her they have other plans, but also tells the group to stop by his house party. He tells Gerald it will be perfect for their prank, but neglects to tell the others what is planned. Arnold and Gerald use a voice changer and props to make it seem like an alien invasion is happening during the party, but Grandpa dismisses it as a prank, but once Helga and the crew arrive, the apartment thinks that they're real aliens and chase them with weapons. All this is caught on camera and the city goes in panic. The group of kids are being chased around by an angry mob while trying to take off the costume. Unfortunately, Gerald bought makeup that doesn't come off. The episode ends with the kids being chased to a water tower which is bursted open by a catapult and washing the makeup off the kids. Number 3, The Switching Hour from Ah, Real Monsters. This Halloween episode is actually the first episode of Ah, Real Monsters. It's a great first episode to start the creepy series. A small boy named Nicky was trying to take the trash out and spots Ickus who startles him. Nicky tries to tell his brother but disbands it as just a bunny rabbit. At the Monster Academy, the Grumble announces to all his monster students that it's Halloween and the monsters are banned from walking out of the dump. Ickus, Crumb, and Ablina are disappointed as they are planning on escaping to the human world. Nikki, the human that Ickus scared the night before, dresses up as Ickus for Halloween, which makes Nikki's older brother Jake and his friends laughing at him thinking Nikki is a purple bunny rabbit. The monsters escape from the dump and see the kids getting candy. All three monsters try to scare the kids, but the kids think they're just humans in costumes and not real monsters. The monsters have reached two houses and a party. After the monsters leave the party, Jake, Nikki's brother, and his friends start egging and teepeeing the neighborhood. One of Jake's friends mistakes Ickus for Nikki, and Crum and Ablina mistake Nikki for Ickus. Nikki is taken back into the trio's dorm where they find that Ickus is Nikki in costume, and Ickus gets in Nikki's clothes to fake himself as Nikki. Ickus even goes as far as going to Nikki's school. After school, Nikki Ickus, Jake, and Jake's friends go back to the house to trade Halloween candy. So Ickus suggests to flush himself down the potty, but then Jake rips off Ickus' hat, they both get into a fight, triggering Ickus' scare mode and chasing Jake's friends away. Nikki gets home safely, and Ickus returns to the Monster Academy just fine. Number 2, Count Dogula from Cat Dog. This episode starts off with Cat Dog carving a pumpkin and getting dressed for Halloween. Cat is going as a Hawaiian surfer and Dog is going as Dracula. The TV interrupts their convo with news stories about a vampire-like bite marks on cows, which cows turning into vampire-like creatures. The city is angered by the vampire epidemic going on and forms a mob to destroy them. Cat Dog finishes their trick-or-treating and decided to go home, taking a shortcut through a graveyard when a swarm of vampire ticks bite Dog on the neck which turns him into a vampire. The mob notices that Dog is a vampire and chase after them. Luckily, Dog turns into a bat to escape back to home. Lola explains the history of the vampire ticks while they try to find a cure for Dog to turn him back into normal before he's stuck as a vampire forever. Cat and Lola must douse Dog into a garlic juice before midnight at the nearby garlic factory. The vampire ticks have now turned everyone into vampires and they want to make Cat a vampire also. Luckily, Cat was able to start the garlic machine in the factory while doing a cliche Frankenstein line. The garlic factory explodes and keeps from everyone from staying a vampire forever. Number 1, Doug's Halloween Adventure from Doug. Now Doug was my favorite Nickelodeon cartoon growing up, but some people may disagree. It reminds me of just everyday life as a young kid, so I can relate to the show pretty well. The story starts off by Skeeter talking about an old house that was built for Baron Von Heckelhofer. 
but when Baron and his love of his life entered the home, they fell to their death and made the house cursed forever. Years later, someone purchased the home and turned it into a haunted house amusement ride called Bloodstone Manor. Doug and Skeeter decided to go to the haunted house ride instead of trick-or-treating, while Roger and his gang of friends go around TPing houses. Doug and Skeeter get to the ride 15 minutes before the park closes, but the ride seemed to close 15 minutes early. Doug, Skeeter, and Roger decided to go ahead and enter the haunted house to ride. They are greeted by a hooded man in a painting, pretty tempting to kill them for trespassing. This hooded man is causing booby traps to try to trap the boys in the haunted house. But once Doug finds out the flesh hole of death is just a glass floor, the guys decide to go further even though Roger is getting more scared now. The hooded man follows the boys through the haunted ride, scaring them any way he can. While on the ride, the roller coaster stops because the park just closed at 10. Doug and Skeeter explore further in the house to find an exit while Roger stays behind scared senseless. The hooded man tries to scare the boys out, but Doug confronts him. The hooded man ends up helping them to a video control room revealing Roger is trying to prank Doug and Skeeter the entire time. The hooded man scares off Roger and the gang, and Doug and Skeeter walk out to the park with the hooded man and reveals himself as Baron Von Heckelhofer, the man that died in the house that made the curse. If you like this Halloween list, then give the video a thumbs up. In the comments below, tell me what Halloween specials you would add to the list. And if you want to keep up with new videos that release, then subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.